Hey, hello there folks, it's me RJB from RJB TV, and I've got a battle between JH and Monster. Now I must admit, I don't really know who this Monster player is, I could not find out who he is, so he might just be Monster, he might just be himself and not someone else, he might not be a Smurf name someone was using. So let's dive into this and see what JH is gonna bring to the table against the player called Monster. Say, I'm not sure if Monster is the clan tag or if Say is the clan tag or if there's no clan tag involved in this name at all. So let me just adjust my microphone real quick. Okay, this is a little bit better. I had to move my microphone forward a little bit. It was a little bit too far away. Something I do to reduce the impact of clicking my mouse or typing on my keyboard is I put a towel underneath my Blue Yeti microphone and the towel hopefully absorbs some vibrations from the table to not get caught up and disturb the microphone um, input thing device whatever you call it the recording that's what they say so we have Komodo also known as JH going for a Weird as hell build order. This is not what I was expecting from him when he was gonna go for a mech build order But he's doing this exact same thing and I don't think this is the way to go about it because his gas is gonna be a little bit slow Wait, it is the way to go about it. Wait, wait, wait So I predict that he's gonna get about a hundred gas or s maybe not I, I, I think this is whack. I think this is whack. He might get a hundred gas by the time the barracks finishes He might not as Monster is definitely gonna get 200 gas by the time his barracks finishes to get double factory. Whereas Komodo, JH, is probably looking to go for a single factory and maybe one or two marines before... Actually, he's gonna have one marine out. He's gonna have one marine out and his very first factory starts exactly after the barracks. So, turns out that what JH was doing Everything does kind of perfectly align. And I must say, not what I was expecting. I, I might try this build order myself. You get a barracks and a supply depot and then a gas all at the same time at nine SCVs. It's wild, it's wacky, and it works. I guess it works. I've never seen this done before, but it works. It's a Terran against Terran. I, someone in the comments asked me a little while ago, like actually two videos ago, can you please do more mirror matchups? And I answered their call. I did a Brain against Bjold, Protoss against Protoss, which was honestly, that was a very good two game series between Bjold and Brain. It was really, really good. The two arguably best players in the world all around facing off on fastest map in a Protoss against Protoss. And now we have Monster against JH, who's playing on the name Komodo in the Terran against Terran. Double factory finished for Monster. We have a Vulture out there somewhere. Actually, he did not get the Vulture whatsoever. He skipped the Vulture. He goes for a bunker in the front. Is that a bunker? Supply Depot, excuse me, not a bunker. He's playing this very riskily, to be honest. He could have been rushed and killed if he had a worse position on the map compared to Monster. He's going for a second command very early on. He's getting... Is that? Is it siege mode? He's skipping vultures completely. And he gets the supply depot up a bunker. Okay, this is a bunker. He's getting a bunker up in the front to block that vultures from getting in. The vultures do very little structural damage and the tank arrives as exactly as the vultures arrive, and the tank absolutely craps on vultures that are standing behind a wall. So this was actually really good stuff here from JH, and it's something I've not seen anyone do so far. It's really interesting that I just so happened to select the one replay out of the very few Terran against Terran replays I have on Fastest Map, because Koreans don't really play a lot of TVT or ZVZ. They kind of avoid the matchup completely, and I think I know why, because these games tend to drag out quite a bit. Terran against Terran is considered to be the most boring matchup by many, many people. 
I disagree. I like it. I like it a lot. So we have double tank there up in the front. We got a starboard on the way already. Double factory producing double tanks and double commander producing double SCVs. Uh, so we have monster on one commander. He's gonna fall behind with his worker count over time if he doesn't add a second one. But he has triple factory producing. Goliaths are finished up. We have vision all over the place with vultures running about. They might place some mines, but he's not researching mines at the moment. He's getting siege mode. I'm not sure if he has mines or not. Oh, the vultures are on patrol, so they're getting vision with patrol. He's trying to spend his gas as efficiently as he can, but he's got quite a bit of gas building up, so he's probably more focused on spending the minerals as efficiently as he can. As that seems to be the limiting factor at the moment, because he put 9 SCVs. That's 7 SCVs. Again, not something you usually see, someone building a third refinery to only mine from it with a single SCV, although I think he just added on one more. No, it's still seven. So seven gas on the refi seven minerals on, seven SCVs on the refineries. That's what I wanted to say. We have tanks scoring the map. He still does not know where Monster is. So far, this has been a very weird game. We have seen an attempt at combat, which got shut down by ATH pretty easily with a very fast tank protecting the front from the vultures. And we have the barrack there flying across the map to get vision on this frontal section. We have double wraith. GH is really playing a funky, funky style, intercepting the dropship exactly as planned. Dropship is shut down. This is a very interesting, very interesting way of playing Terran against Terran on fast map really never seen anyone do this. Now, not that I've seen a lot of Terran against Terran on fastest map. I've seen hundreds of Terrans against Terrans on normal maps, a lot of them. And this is really unique. Compared to both of those maps, the normal maps, you don't see this. Fastest maps, you usually do not see this. But JH cooked something up that piques my interest. So more rates on the map, four rates. Goliaths in the back there, though, can keep the rates away. Does he have scan? No scan. He's getting it right now, though. Do we have cloak there from JH? We got... No cloak. Do we have cloak? We got cloak. I'm gonna try to kill the turret there being built in the back. SV goes down. Turret gets cancelled. Gets denied. Tank still winning in the front. He's gonna try to kill the tanks. Scan is almost finished up. Gets his scan already. Is he gonna scan? Yes, there he is. Goes in and he pushes the rates away, but the rates can just come back after the scan ends. We got the rates that are coming out from Monster as well. Tried to go into the back, so we got a turret there in the back. Gonna kill the SVs in the front yet again. Gets a little bit closer to completing that turret over time. Energy runs out. So loses one, loses two, not three. Comes back in. Takes a couple more shots. Almost lost that one. He's gonna check the back. So he sees the starports. Very good information there being gathered. He's on 55, 6, 56 SCVs. He's grown quite a substantial economic lead. You can see it in the supply count as well. 30 more supply, but only 20 more SCVs. So his army has grown bigger than Monster pretty rapidly. But Monster is going to catch up though. Adding on two more commands in us for a total of four. Two are finished, two on the way. Triple factory, and we have a four factory. Two for Goliaths, two for tanks. We have double armory. We have a weapon on the way, no armor on the way. Now do note that we already have level 1 attack finished there for monster. So monster does have the upgrade advantage for pretty much the remainder of the game. He's going to be ahead with upgrades for the entire game for as long as it lasts. More raids on the way. They're being built there by JH. He's not repairing them. He should repair them. He's getting more f star ports as well. Do we have size visitor there on the way? Yeah, his supply is growing quick. Scan's coming down. I'm not sure who scanned. Okay, monster scanned. Scanned the main. Sees a lot of turrets. Sees a lot of uh, tanks as well. Drop shipping on top to kill the SCVs. Probably not gonna happen. Tanks are setting up on the middle to keep him contained as well. Raids are waiting in the back to fly in and snipe whatever is being thrown out. So yeah, he's still building raids. He's only staying on four factories. He might add more with those two SCVs there though. Looks like monster. Okay, he gets scanned. 
supply. JH scans the back and the front. Sees almost nothing in the back. Sees very little in the front. This is all because of those extra SCVs giving him so many more minerals. The Goliath there on the side, the Raids on the side. We have tanks on the middle there from JH with some turrets in between. I do not like how he spaced them out. Preferably you would space them out a little bit more so that they don't take splash damage from the enemy tanks. But it works. All he needs is this line of tanks and Monster is pretty much contained for at least a substantial amount of time. Raids are protecting the map there, just hanging about, ready to intercept dropships. We have turrets being built there on the bottom side. We have a couple more factories. Both players are really just, this is why a lot of players don't like TVT, I guess. I like this, I like watching this, because this is interesting to me, because I'm seeing interesting developments happening left and right. We've got four armories there from Monster. Still on triple starport, we have six starports there from JH. Eight starports, that's a lot. Getting all the dropships, gonna try to fly into the base and go for a decisive finishing blow right off the bat. Okay, so we had scans coming out there from Monster and he did not see those units leave. They were already gone, so he doesn't know that there's dropships on the middle waiting to attack him. Still, the backside is poorly protected. He does have some raids. And yeah, just some raids. 10 raids. Just some raids. No tanks in the back. He, ha he will have trouble killing that drop as it comes in over the wherever it comes from. For the bottom side, he's distracting with the raids on the top. Raids from Monster are on the hunt. This is a great, great bait. Pulling the raids away, and now that he flies through that engineering bay, he's gonna pull his raids back home. The tanks are being put on the high ground, glides in between. The raids won't have a great time here as scans will come down and raids coming from JH as well. It's going to be a raid against raid. Great micro there from Monster though, but he's going to have to retreat. Most of the Goliaths that go down though, most of the Goliaths that go down, but JH now is going to swallow the high ground and he's going to kill supply depots and maybe supply block Monster who's stuck at 160. As JH is almost maxed out entirely. Another wave of drop tips coming in and drop on the low ground. We do have a lot of tanks there on the side there from Monster, ready to take down whatever is unloaded. Goes in, double scans from both players, and Monster has really good Wraith control, but takes more damage than he wants to. Snipes a dropship. JH cannot go in any deeper at the moment. He's being held back. But Komodo, uh, sorry, Monster is supply blocked quite badly. He desperately needs more supply depots, and he is not building them. He's not building them. He's really panic. I, you can see that he is panicking right now. He needs supply depots. He should not have gone in. He should not have done that. That was a very bad choice because he just lost a lot of supply that he cannot replace because he's supply blocked. He just made a huge, huge mistake. And this opens up the way for JH to go all the way into the backside and unload on location with two tanks, uh, three tanks, Goliath, and start killing SCVs. This is a nightmare situation for Monster, who still is not rebuilding those supply. Okay, he's building two here, but only two, not more. The supply difference is humongous. This game flipped really quickly. GH is literally picking Monster apart. Monster is falling apart at the seams. BCs on the scene, ready to take down those tanks. The tanks do go down. SVs have been safe, but he lost. 20 of them. Not a great game playing experience here. He's not enjoying this. His minerals are very low. He's got a lot of gas though, but his minerals are very low. BC is coming in. BCs will take heavy fire there from the Valkyries. Actually, the Valkyries don't do that much damage because he has level 1 armor finished up, so that's going to be a whole lot less damage from those Valkyries, which are largely AOE units. Upgrades are 1 1 1. 2 on the ground. The air is on 1-1-1 one, one, one there from GH and 1-2 there on the ground. So yes, the upgrades are equalized, I'd say. But very soon, Monster will have better upgrades. Now he is unsupply blocked, kind of, not entirely. Big attacker in the front, tank setting up there from both players. But that's an overpowering force there from GH. The Goliaths are tanking shots from the tanks 
and the battle cruisers battle cruisers dying very quickly very quickly the tanks from the monster have been killed the goliath did their job they took fire from the enemy tanks to allow his own tanks to shoot and kill the enemy tanks easy break strong push and i'm expecting the gg about any time now he's scanning the map battle cruisers on the scene battle cruisers will buy some time as they do fight greatly against the tanks and goliaths he might clear this out for now, but we have another big wave of raids going from across the map, and so are the Goliaths and tanks, and a big drop there on the back. Big drop on the back. Calls GG, leaves the game. And that's game number one. Going to JH by beating up the player Monster. The Monster really made one big blunder, and that was moving his units into an enemy position while being supply blocked. I think he should have just waited. He should have just waited and let his supply depots finish up and then move while new units are in production. He got too greedy, moved too early, lost a lot of units and then he could not replace them because he was supply blocked and that backfired instantly. It was opened up and JH went in Hit the economy. Once the economy was down in the dumps, JH just finished him off. Very well played by JH. What a very interesting opening build order. Anyway, we got game number two now with Monster on the Protoss and JH on the Terran. Protoss against Terran. The one matchup that I would say JH has played the most in StarCraft. In his own StarCraft career, that is. Not out of everyone, but. He largely plays Terran against Protoss, against players like Lee Baku, Hamburger Sasu, Byol, and the whole list of other names like 458, and you can go on and on and on. He plays Terran against Protoss at least 80% of the time. It's his favorite matchup, and he has become quite skilled at surviving Protoss attacks as a Terran. And he's not just a one trick pony on Terran either, he can play offensively and defensively. However you want it, however you name it, he has pretty much everything in his skill set. Now do note that this game is from a time period where JH was very active, more active than now. Like in 2024, I'd say JH is still pretty good, but he is out of shape. This was from 2021, when he was still in his prime, playing every day, growing better every day as well. Back then, he was just a different kind of player than he is right now. But he will get back there. He will get all that skill back over time. Nexus first there from Monster into a Forge, into a Choke, into a Scout. Uh, the Gateway should be coming up very soon with this probe coming out right now. And then a can in the front. And SV they're scouting from JH who went for a 8 Barracks, 9 Supply Depot. Marine is already out on the map. SV scouting in the right direction. Finds him on the first spawn. And that is going to allow the Marines and SVs to try and cancel those cannons in the front to open up the front door and prevent the choke, which will expose Monster's backside to enemy attacks. But it's three probes, and three probes should be enough to defend and allow the cannon to finish up. Let's get on the Marine, attack the Marine. Probe goes down, Marine goes down as well. Still no damage there on the cannons, no damage dealt on the cannon. Attacking with the two SVs. Trying to damage the Marine, gonna lose one, he's gonna... No, the cannon is gonna finish. That's a very weak cannon though. Oh, is it gonna die? No, ooh, very close. 19 HP, 21. So yeah, almost gets the cannon. Risky call, risky call, but it worked. Monster lost only one probe. JH lost two SCVs, so I'd say Monster actually got out a little bit better out of that than JH did. But JH, knowing that Komodo, I mean, sorry, I keep mixing this up. JH is Komodo. So JH, knowing that Monster went for a Nexus first into a choke, is deciding to discontinue marine production at the moment and get a Commander and double caster in the back. Lifting up a barracks, getting an academy as well for Stim and Firebats gonna fly into Monster Space and try to run some Firebats onto those probes in the back. But Monster not gonna get caught off guard, he's building a cannon in the back to kill Firebats as they run in on those probes, and likewise another cannon in the front. 
monsters playing it safe. Also putting pylons on the sides just to make sure that barracks is flying in aren't gonna be spotted. So yeah, he's gonna try. He's gonna try, nonetheless. He's gonna be a little bit of a cheeky bastard. Just landed right there. And produce a fire bat. It's almost finished. Barracks still on the way. So is the factory. Command center are very close to finishing. We got Marines there in the front waiting to attack. But four cannons should be more than enough to stop the advance from the front. It's gonna be five cannons even. Five cannons in total. <sighs> Delicious. Delicious drink. It's just water, honestly. It's just water. So Monster might be trying to set up for a counter choke break attack. So if J. Hitch tries to stim into the cannons and break through, there will be Dragoons waiting in the back to counter attack those weakened medics and marines. That's what he's trying to do. He only went for a single robotics, not two, only a single one, and a citadel of Goon in the back, getting range as well. And the support base should soon be on the way. Oh wait, he's actually not waiting. He's not waiting. He's actually going for it a little bit ahead of schedule. I thought he was going to wait for JH to be the aggressor and then counterattack, but he is the aggressor instead. And that winds up not doing anything except lose him the Zealots and maybe almost lose his second one. He's going to try to micro and kite away and maybe kill some marines, just do some damage. Stim is finished there from JH, getting brain damage while stimming onto the Dragoons. Dragoons running to safety, taking heavy damage. Got a star put on the way as well for a tank drop, getting factory number two. Barracks is back home with three barrack production. And it looks like Monster is actually doing a pretty good job with the Dragoon control. He's punishing JH for lifting one barracks up, which means it wasn't producing at all until it arrived back in base, which means the Marine count is a little low. So Monster with a great read on the situation here. Tank is out there for JH, shooting under the Dragoons. Dragoons dying, but ah, the Micro is good, but range and stim is just really strong against Dragoons. Marines with range and stim are just really strong against Dragoons. So now we do have double Robo. We've got support pay and dark uh, high Templars archive in the back. Four gateways. Getting more cannons in the back as well against those tank drops. We have the control tower on the way, so doesn't have to fear losing his probes just yet, but we'll have to very soon. We don't have turrets yet. We do have an engineering bay getting level one attack. We don't have a wall in the front. We have a scan coming down as well onto his base. Checks the front. Nothing is finished yet there in the front. We don't have a shuttle. He's getting a shuttle and a robo, uh, a reaver at the same time. The Templar are gonna maybe get picked up as well, or maybe attack the front. Turrets are now being built. Uh, getting commander number three, which I know, I think I mentioned that already. Global starboard. Uh, Stargate is well coming in there from Monster. Monster is spending his minerals quite well. Which I like, I like it. I like that he's spending his minerals quite well. A lot of cannons being built there on the bottom side. Not much here on the top side of his base yet. So this is still a weakness against tank drops, but he has Dragoons to snipe the dropship or the tanks before they can shoot. So at the moment, not yet in need of a lot of cannons dropped there over the left side. Turret not finished yet, flies right on in. Dark Dumper out. Turret finishes. She'll take shots. JH is gonna try to snipe the Reaver before it shoots, but it shoots its load and the load does not explode. The load does not explode. So he's at least to stay alive. He's on 49 against 60. 60 probes. Getting double forge there on the top for triple forge upgrades. Storm almost finished up and Zelda Speed almost finished up as well. Everything is finishing up exactly at the same time. So the Storm is finished, Shuttle Speed finishing in like 2 or 3 seconds, and then we have Zelda Speed finishing almost at the same time. Leg enhancements, they're called. So we have upgrades coming in as well. We've got shield, weapon, and armor. We have double drop there over the left side again. He's not going over the short side, he's going over the long end. Double High Templar, Double Dark Templar. 
Another High Templar and a Zealot flies in as these have to run to safety. Oh, bat pull, bat pull, bat pull. Loses a couple of them. Five kills, nine kills. He got a lot of marine kills there as well. There's still one Dark Templar in the back. Whacking his stuff. Gets killed by... Ooh, there's a turret here. Okay, so there's a turret. Detection. Worked. I'd say there was a good drop there from Monster that slowed JH down significantly. Did not lose too many SCVs, but lost a nice amount of Marines. Uh, had to pull the SCVs away, so that means no mining. Lost 9 SCVs, which is also pretty decent. Not a lot, but it's pretty decent. All in all, I would say, Monster set himself up for future success. Uh, Raids in the sky, ready to snipe the shuttles. We're still only on 4 barracks. Only four barracks. I would have liked to see five or six for a stronger marine defense. He's kind of trying to lowball this. He's trying to play this with as little as he can. I'm not sure if that is the right choice. Local turrets are on the right side. Storming on the marines. Marines all going down. Zealous on the scene. Those storms absolutely destroyed the marines on the scene. He has only two or three marines still alive. Only four Marines. There's one more on the left side. He does have raids, but raids will not replace the Marines. The Marines have a high value in defending against units unloading. Raids are hunting for the shuttles. He's still building the shuttles. He went in a little bit too early, found nothing on the scene. We got a double course around the way from the double stargate. We have a lot of gateways there from Monster. He's playing this very well. I like his upgrades as well. Like, still on 0, 0, 0, but he's getting 1, 1, 1. At the same time, getting air armor as well to help those shuttles survive for a little bit longer. Whereas the Marines are on 1 attack. Not getting level 2 attack. I think he should get level 2 attack. Level 2 attack is just so strong. It's just so strong. Getting level 1 attack for the tanks. I think it's a mistake not getting level 2 attack. I think is a mistake. Is make those marines a little bit stronger. Oh wait, he finds the shuttles, but doesn't take it down. Retreats back to the cannons just on time. Very close call. Almost lost the shuttle. Look at this. Almost lost it. Goes back in. Does not find the shuttles he was looking for. Loses a lot of raids. Big fumble attack happening. Big fumble attack happening. Ooh, massive, maxed out army from the attack. Storming everywhere. Storming the marines, the tanks, whatever he can. Well, the goons are going to break through the front door. Supply demons are in the way, but they're going to get taken down very soon. Rates are coming in to take down the shuttle. The shuttles are no longer a problem. Argo is morphing. Tanks teaching up. Yeah, he does not have enough. Drop comes in at the same time as well. Is there something in there? No, they are empty. Huge army in the front, breaking through. There's literally nothing to help him stay alive. He lost too many units over and over. Old monster had to do was alone in the front, break down that choke, and keep producing units you're back at home. He did that with a 11 gateway. Just ran him over. Beautifully played. He did small little bits of incremental damage to JH and slowed him down just enough. Made him think it was going to be a pure mineral defense game and then hit him with the frontal attack. Monster redeemed himself with, honestly, a very strong Protoss. This is a very strong Protoss. I like it. I'm impressed. And JH, sadly, once again, bites the dust. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this two-game series between Monster and JH, who played the name Komodo. And hope to see you return next time around, whenever I make that next video. See you soon. Have a great day.